Today, we've got the battle of the best sellers. In one corner, we have the Anycubic Photon Mono 6KS, the reigning champ that dominated Amazon's best seller list at just $299. And on the other, Creality's Hallet Mage 8K, which swooped in with its own $299 price tag and dethroned Anycubic's top sales title. But why are these Amazon's top selling 3D resin printers? And more importantly, which one gives you the biggest bang for your buck? Buckle up because we're diving deep to crown the ultimate mid-range resin printer champion. Let's do this. It's the money. Hey guys, CJ from Elevated Systems. When I bought the Anycubic Mono 6KS, it was the reigning champ on Amazon, flying off the shelves with over 300 units sold every single month. But here's the thing, I don't just do those quick in and out unboxing videos. Instead, I dive deep, giving these machines a real workout to uncover their true potential and any sneaky pitfalls. And guess what happened during my tech deep dive? Creality threw a curveball, slashing the price of their Hallet Mage 8K to go head to head with the 6KS at the same $299. So I thought, why not get both? This review just went from why is everyone obsessed with the 6KS to battle of the discounted printers. Which 3D printer gives you the most bang for the same buck? We're gonna pit them against each other, dissect their features, test out their user friendliness, and look into their unique software. And the big question, does the 8K's apparent 33% boost in resolution over the 6K translate to mind-blowing print quality improvements? Buckle up because the result may shock you. Let's get this thing started with the unboxing and setup process for each. Both these printers come pretty much ready to roll straight out of the box, packed with all the accessories you need to dive right in. The Anycubic includes a standard screen protector, so you'll want to peel the protective film from both the screen and the FEP film on the resin tank. On the Creality side, there aren't any protective films to deal with, so be extra cautious when handling. After a quick scan of the instructions, setup is straightforward. Your main tasks, making sure the build plate is perfectly level and securing the resin tank in place. Once you've filled up the tank with resin, you're all set to start printing. Side by side, it's clear there are some differences, so let's dive deep into the specs and features of each. First up, the size. The Anycubic 6KS stands at 9.8 by 11.5 by 16.5 inches, while the Creality Hallet Mage comes in at 13.5 by 10.7 by 24 inches. With its larger dimensions, the Creality boasts a 40% larger build volume, measuring 228 by 128 by 230 millimeters, compared to the Anycubic's 195.84 by 122.4 by 200 millimeter build volume. Despite the size disparity, both machines are robustly constructed with mostly all metal bodies, dual linear Z-axis rails, sealed tempered glass screens, and highly responsive touchscreens. Their intuitive menu systems offer all the essential features without any unnecessary bells and whistles. For accessing model print files, both have a USB port. Creality is conveniently located up front while Anycubics is on the right side. One possibly overlooked feature both printers share is the vat cleaning tool, which briefly exposes the entire build surface of the vat, forming a thin sheet of cleared resin, trapping any small particles that may settle in the resin so you can easily peel the sheet up from the bottom without having to drain and filter the resin between prints and making the task of cleaning out the vat when required much simpler. A few standout differences include the Mage's unique flip-up lid versus Anycubic's traditional lift-off cover and the Creality's built-in carbon filter with an exhaust tube. When it comes to print speeds, both machines lag behind some of the pricier, newer models. The Anycubic with a max print speed of 60 millimeters per hour outpaces the Creality's 40 millimeters per hour. In real-world tests, this meant the Anycubic finished the same print noticeably faster with the default settings on both machines. In addition to being slower, the Creality machine is significantly louder with externally mounted fans that run at max speed non-stop, as opposed to the internal much quieter fans in the Anycubic that only spin up when the machine is actively printing. But here's the big showdown. 8K, 
versus 6K resolution. Sounds like a game changer, right? Well, not exactly. While these K numbers might sound impressive, they're often just marketing speak. Yes, they do indicate pixel density with the Hallett Mage boasting 7680 by 4320 pixels compared to the 6KS's 5760 by 3600. That's a staggering 60% better pixel density for the Creality, but here's the kicker. The Creality also has a larger screen, crunching the numbers, the actual pixel size, which is the crucial resolution metric, is 30 nanometers for the Creality and 34 nanometers for AnyCubic. And in a side-by-side -side print comparison, that four nanometer difference, virtually undetectable. Once primed, models from both printers are indistinguishable. The bottom line, both these printers deliver top-notch, highly detailed models. No matter how top-notch a 3D printer is, one of the most daunting tasks, especially for newcomers, is transforming a digital 3D model file into a tangible printed masterpiece. Enter the world of slicers, software that readies your model and turns out printer-friendly code. With a plethora of slicers like Chitubox, Lychee, and Prusa Slicer, navigating the maze of settings tailored for your specific printer and resin can be overwhelming. But here's the good news. Both these printers come equipped with their dedicated slicers. Creality brings you the Hallet Box, while AnyCubic offers the Photon Workshop. I'll dive deeper into each slicer shortly, but here's the gist. If you're working with pre-supported models, achieving flawless prints is a breeze. Just select your printer model and resin type, drag in the model, slice, and save to your thumb drive. These slicers are tailor-made for their respective printers, ensuring all settings are spot on, eliminating the need for tedious guesswork or trial runs. And if you're venturing into custom or unsupported models, these slicers come packed with all the tools you need, from moving, rotating, and scaling, to hollowing and adding drain holes, even segmenting larger models, they've got you covered. Most crucially, both sliders boast comprehensive support tools. While I'm usually wary of auto support features, my tests on both machines were surprisingly successful, especially since the slicers allow for support edits and overhang shading. Another massive perk, these propriety slicers won't cost you a dime. Even if you're partial to another slicer for model prep, I'd strongly advise preparing the STL and saving it in your preferred software and then slicing it using the printer specific software. A case in point, the Creality printer comes bundled with a three month Chitubox Pro trial, my go to for its versatile support system. Yet, even after fine tuning machine specific settings and slicing with Chitubox, this pre-supported beholder model partially failed on both printers. However, using the proprietary slicers, flawless results on both fronts. Now, once you've got your model sliced and ready on your USB drive, the printing magic begins. Both these machines make the process incredibly straightforward. Simply plug in the drive, navigate to your model in the print menu, and if you use the proprietary software, you'll even get a visual preview of your model. Hit print and let the machine work its magic. For the bulk of my test, I stuck with resins produced by the corresponding printer manufacturers. My research suggests that many, especially those new to 3D printing world, tend to use resins from the same brand as their printer, but being the curious tech enthusiast I am, I also tested each resin on the other printer and even threw in some third-party resins. Using a calibration model, I fine-tuned the exposure time settings, achieving stellar prints with every resin I tried. And here's the best part. Thanks to our vast and collaborative 3D printing community, there's a good chance someone's already done the heavy lifting for you. For the AnyCubic printer, I found a treasure trove of resin settings, including a community-backed spreadsheet detailing settings for a plethora of resins. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing. I stumbled upon a glitch with the Hallet Mage. If I initiated a new print right after completing one without rebooting the machine, the subsequent print would falter. To be more precise, the exposure process would go awry, while the initial three base layers would expose and stick to the build plate as expected, the subsequent layers, despite appearing to be exposed and the machine seemingly in printing mode, were actually forming. I only realized when the build plate rose above the resin tank revealing 
nothing. And there wasn't a thick layer of cured resin at the bottom of the tank, which would suggest the model had detached from the build plate. This hiccup occurred twice, both times when I had swiftly removed the model from the plate and started a new print without giving the printer a reset. From then on, I made it a point to power off the printer post print and the issue hasn't resurfaced. Now, let's circle back to the resins. Each has its strengths and weaknesses, much like their respective machines. The Creality resin is less pungent and cures to a smooth matte finish, which seems to grip primer more effectively. However, post-processing was a bit of a challenge. The uncured resin was stubborn to wash, even with 99% IPA, leaving a chalky residue. This made the supports thicker and trickier to remove often resulting in unsightly pockmarks and chips. On the flip side, the Anycubic resin was a dream to work with. A quick spritz with IPA was all it took to wash off the uncured resin, and its flexibility meant supports peeled off effortlessly, leaving the models mostly pristine. Wrapping this up, with both printers delivering virtually identical print quality, backed by robust slicing software, and boasting an incredibly user-friendly setup and operation, all at the same price point, either option is a good choice, especially for beginners seeking more flexibility and detail than what typical entry-level resin printers offer. There's a case to be made for both. I'm personally drawn to the more compact design of the Anycubic, not to mention its swifter print speeds and quieter operation. I did attempt to match the 6KS's speed on the Hallett Mage, and while the print emerged without any glaring flaws, it did grapple with significant dimensional accuracy issues. The pieces just wouldn't fit together. But if I had to pick a winner, the Hallett Mage 8K takes the crown. Its larger build volume provided invaluable during my review, but it's the little extras that truly set it apart. The carbon filter is a game changer. No matter the resin, it effectively neutralized about 90% of the odor. In my garage, the Hallett Mage operates without a whiff of fumes, whereas the 6KS can quickly fill the space, prompting me to turn on a fan and crack the garage door. I even tried the separately purchased Anycubic filters, but they fell short, filtering out virtually nothing. But the real deal sealer for me, the Hallett Mage's flip-up lid. It seems trivial, but honestly, it's a feature every resin printer should adopt. Traditional liftoff lids, they're a hassle, especially when you're handling them with resin coated gloves. My workbench is full, so most often than not, I find myself placing on the floor only to trip or kick them late. The flip up design is simply more practical and efficient. So there you have it folks. It seems Amazon shoppers nailed it. The Anycubic Photon Mono 6KS is undeniably a stellar printer offering fantastic value under $300. However, with Creality's strategic price reduction on their Hallett Mage 8K, they've rightfully claimed the top spot as the best selling 3D resin printer. I'm eager to hear your take on this. So let me know in the comments which one you're leaning towards and why. Don't forget to smash that like button, and if you haven't already, do consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one.